when we're looking for exhibition invites, um, there's a few things that come up that you need to have on your model railway to secure those. So I asked a few years back in 2018 on the model railway exhibition group, as you can see here, the very people, the exhibition managers, who will be picking which layouts to take. So if we open up all the comments, uh, it says uh, that I typed, with building an exhibition layout, what, ex what do exhibition managers see as the main desirable factors when inviting you to a show? Now, the things that they came up with were, uh, number one, the least expenses, grab factor, does the layout provide in instant grab to keep the paying punters interested, so is it entertaining? And then I asked there, and they said, depends, nicely lit, clean finish on the front, woodwork, smiling operators help too, but uh, yeah, try finding some of those, sometimes it can be a bit of a difficult task. Um, just scrolling through, we can have a little read some more. So think of it for yourself, what draws you to a layout, one gentleman there said, Andy. And what I replied was, the longer you see, the longer you see more details on the layout, pretty much. And uh, yeah, Andy agreed with that. Spot on, need a good presentation to give the initial grab. Cameos and details add depth to any layout too. Get the punters interested, give them a storyline of items to follow through the layout. So on some layouts, you can see like a list of 10 items for the kids to find. The kids love doing that and some the adults too as well. Uh, so maybe find like the swan that's eating, I don't know, someone's fish and chips or something and uh, all different funny things that kids can look for. Um, what else do we have here? So uh, this gentleman here is an exhibition manager. He looks at how well the layout operates. I also look out for little cameos of scenery too, to keep not just the model enthusiasts interested, but other people entertained too. So bear in mind, like, uh, you might have one person that come with a group that is a railway modeler bringing their family. Their family need to be entertained too. So this gentleman here says he sees thousands of layouts per year as a trader, but seeing something totally different always grabs his attention. So layouts fall into two categories for them. It's prototypical running of trains and formations and scenery, including buildings, etc. And number two is something completely different with keep folk watching trains. It doesn't have to be the main focus. So he says that um, prototypical layouts and then entertaining layouts are two separate things. Um, obviously, you could have a nicely detailed entertaining layout, but uh, I suppose he's talking more about like a tail chaser sort of layout. So Stephen says, it depends how long to set up and take down the layout, how good the scenic work is, how good it runs, plus operators not ignoring the public by chatting to other operators. Public like to see trains running and operators talking. Yeah, that's, that's true. Absolutely. Um, personally, on my layout, there's no operator. It's all automated. So I can chat to everybody, the public, as long as you need. But uh, that gives you something to think about there. Um, Chris uh, he found that chatting to the public is key. With today on his first show, 80% of his day was chatting to the public and answering their questions. One of the best parts of the day, he said. So he's likely to get another invite for another exhibition in the future. Um, and Stephen says, as long as somebody is operating the layout as well, I agree, it's, it's good to chat with the public. So bring a helper if you've got a manually operated layout or one that's quite labor intensive. Derek says uh, build quality must be good and uh, good running stock. Cost does come into it, but not always. So um, with exhibitions, sometimes you get offered expenses. Um, depends really whether you want to take them up on that or not. If it's a local show, I'll never take expenses as it's just around the corner. It's a fun day out for me. But if it's somewhere far, then uh, I may take a helping hand in some of the diesel, that sort of thing. Um, 
for Larfi built uh, Wensleydale achieved mine. I've actually seen this one. Um, you can see there that gets a lot of invites, I think, as well. It's just something really mad. And for the entertainment value for families, it's very good. You can see there with the first alcoholic cheese, I think I remember. It's got like a cheese pub for the mice. There we go, it's done 46 shows in three years with some of the big ones as well. So something uh, completely mad will often get you a lot of invites. As a regular visitor to exhibition, says Anne, uh, she likes to see layouts where the trains are actually moving at all times. It's so frustrating to see beautiful layouts with nothing running on them. And I must say, I agree with that. Um, <laughs> Derek says he thinks it's the DCC layouts that are slower at running. So if you are using DCC, try and have like a, a quick cheat sheet guide to the different loco numbers so you can punch them in very quickly and get other trains running as quickly as you can. Um, Stephen agrees. And or seeing the same train going around two or three times before you change over the train. Which, uh, yeah, I can understand that. It depends really though. So Mark here likes to see more prototypical running. So we're getting uh, these two themes running parallel to each other, but the scenes. He loves to see proper shunting uh, with settings for the period of the layout going on with steam mirror branch terminus, what he likes to see hands free. So lots of um, little clever gadgets to be used on that. But uh, he agrees with four track mainline and a delay of no of more than 30 seconds is, an, is no movement on any of them is not good. So Andy says he's had that from the other side of the layout working a DCC layout for the first time many years ago it caused the short circuit but he hadn't realised what it was it took a couple of minutes to work out where the short was. So accidents can happen as well. So we're just going on about three link couplings there by the looks of it. Dave says, uh, big note to operators, you're not there to run trains, you're there to interact with the public. If necessary, start up a conversation. If they like the layout, they will stay in chats, even briefly. If they just walk on without saying anything, I, I, I'm not going to open the rest of that. But if you find this comment, <laughs> you can read that one for yourself. Jason says the great thread with some useful touches, getting my sons out for exhibition, and boy, you can chat. So that's a bit of good news for Jason. And he says that his annual exhibition in Greenock, we always try to actively engage the visitors. If kids or parents show enough interest, quite often they get involved behind the layout. I think that's a good point as well. Layouts need to be well presented, well lit when necessary, smooth and problem free running. He saw a layout in Perth this year, ticked all the boxes, DCC sound, blue detail, uh, blue diesels, nicely finished, but the operators were so involved in the conversation, there were no trains running, so it fell at the last fence, they didn't get an invite, so it gives you an idea. So lots of layouts come with a information sheet for the ex exhibition managers to read, um, and I'll show you those later towards the end of the video. Um, you're going to need some important information. Andy here states that size, shape, operating position, power requirement, operator passes and accommodation, value, value of stock, era, location and setting, the small narrative for show guides. Some shows will ask more, some very little. Now, I just want to add one more thing to that. You'll want something called an RCD. And what that does is any short circuits of your main electronic equipment, it will trip a trip switch in that RCD to stop the whole uh, exhibition from coming to a halt. So um, that personally is probably the biggest thing you need to have with you, most important part. So moving on to the next point here, uh, best also to keep it simple and not fill the boards with all the track, it makes it like a train set and not a model railway. So again, that's more down the prototypical um, argument there. 
And then uh, Ian here states that he did something uh, a bit different with Blurthal towards, I can't say that place, but uh, you get the idea there. If you can say that, let me know how. <laughs> a large chunk of the village sits between viewers and the railway at points, which gives some interesting views. I think I've seen this actually, this, this layout at some point. There you are. So that's edging towards the prototypical uh, scenic side. David says, start with a layout that runs faultlessly, then operators that know how to operate it, including the correct speed of trains. Use good track with correct scale ballast. Don't build a model of a single line section as seriously restricts the number of trains running. Make sure you have a track design that lends itself to trains passing one another, and then sort some realistic scenery. If you can be built to travel in personal cars, all the better. So there's no van hire, so it's cheaper for the exhibition managers to get in. Um, Slightly controversial subject there about the single line tracks. There's quite a lot of them that do go to shows, but I appreciate the feedback and I understand where you are coming from there. Um, Dave here is probably a really good example of the other side of the argument. He built this uh, Wilmington Pier layout. I can remember this, I've seen this at a few shows. Over 120 exhibitions, and it's basically a sticker track on a pier. So that again is, is the entertainment factor on that one. It's a novelty. It's very, very interesting to see. And that's what gets the invites on that one. Uh, Sean says the ones he builds are simple to work and less to go wrong. That's a good bit of information there. On my layout, it's not simple, but I've made it resilient. I've enclosed all of the electronic wiring inside cable trunking so it can't get caught anywhere and all the solders are done really firmly so resilience is a really good key aspect for a uh, model exhibition layout this is one of my hates actually as well unfortunately i don't like this uh, a pet like of a dislike of their punters is small layouts operated from the front so you can't see the layout past the operator and yeah, I understand that one. It can always be a bit of a pain when they're set up like that. I understand why, because when they're at home, um, that's where you want to be sat to operate the layout for exhibitions. It can be difficult. Best way to get around that is to operate it from the end. So like the side of the layout. Um, so you're looking up and down the track from the end. Um, that's probably the best way to get around that, and then you have the best of both worlds if you've got the space for that. So, Philip here says, when selecting layouts for invitation, the first criterion is reliable operation without the hand of God. Descending regularly to push, start, or put the trains back on the track. After that, entertainment value, which is shown in many ways, as other responders have said. But interaction of the operators with the public is very, very important. Good, neat presentation is also very important. He rarely invites layouts without a vaccine, so make sure you have one of them. That's probably quite a strong um, tick box to have there. I'm always looking for variety, scale, gauge, period, and location, and layouts he invites. So unusual prototypes will always grab his attention. Then it comes down to his personal preferences, and uh, I don't say that, I'm going to say dislikes. Buildings with gap between the bottom edge and the baseboard. A volcanic fault line between the adjacent baseboards. Yeah, that's never a good thing. Um, flashing LEDs. So he doesn't like flashing LEDs. That's more of a personal preference, I'd say. There's quite a lot of layouts that are very well detailed with them. So take that as you see it there. Uh, Non-consistent weathering are all negative factors. One thing hardly any layouts do good is realistic lighting. So if you're building a layout, think about how you're going to light it to best effect. And that's not by a line of fluorescence or LEDs all the way along the front. And I can agree with that. One of my last layouts, I actually used one of those kitchen cabinet lights, where it's just a big, like a light box on top. So it was very even light spread out, and that got rid of all the shadows. So. Robin says the final comment, he agrees about the hand of God. Um, he was sad, sad at Doncaster show, there were layouts being pushed, uh, trains being pushed by hand. 
but thankfully things were better that year in 2018 from the previous year, 2017. So that really is a rundown of what exhibition managers want to see in a model railway. Um, just hold there a moment, I'm going to go and show you the information sheets that I'll be using. So this is my information sheet, it shows you uh, what we're all about. So starters, we have our title, Western Interchange. For that layout, we have our YouTube channel, so they have information where they can see more of us, and a QR code to link them if they want to link straight away. We have a layout of the track plan, so they can see how it's laid out, and a couple of pictures there to see what they'll be getting. Now, in my text, I have an introduction. I have a fictional history. So it gives you an idea of why the layout looks like it does. Design for Western Interchange is small. So I, here I'm using, uh, getting the technical details of what we've used and the fact that uh, happy for children to have a good look at it. The control system and my special um, feature on the layout, which is the automation, which is the entertainment factor for the public on this layout. And it just lets them know that there's never a moment where the action stops on this one and a fallow car system. So I'm giving you all that information and then uh, the stock list that we're using. And the layout measurements, it's really important to include those and to include the total footprint. So that includes the operator's place to stand and an additional table to add to the 12 foot length, they want me to have an ex extra screen so that you can see uh, the software working. Now it lets you know I have the RCD. I stand behind the layout. Layout travels in a personal car and where it's based. And I don't include my contact details on it because this always comes through email um, when I'm sending this out. When if someone wants this in person, I email it to them. They've got my details. And the requirements we need, one plug socket, one or two operators, and I might live stream to my YouTube channel. So that's it, very basic, and it gets all the main points across. I have uh, a different sheet here. I will be uploading that uh, to the Facebook later, but it's the public version. And it shows you the story of Western Interchange, design and layout, and little bits of information that will be required or interesting people that are maybe too shy to ask, don't want to ask, they can read that and they'll get a good uh, bit of entertainment out of that. And they can ask more questions based off of that information that they're reading. I also have my uh, unique bit of uh, the entertainment factor on my layout, which is the eye train. The automation software and there's an explanation there as to how it works with uh, the different colors explained on the train plan which you can also see on here the yellow the gray and the red but that's about it really and that's the first video done for getting your layout to an exhibition of this mini series so if you want to see some more do keep an eye out, I'll be uploading, uh, preparing the layout, taking the layout, setting up the layout and uh, general exhibition daytime tasks that you might have and then taking down the layout in future videos. See you then, take care and I'll see you in the next one, goodbye.